Hi guys, episode 40, and we're here at the Seafarer's Rest. Uh, last time we were on Tom, uh, we found out about a dragon who, hundreds of years ago, while the JT was still a sea, a dragon granted a man immortality, but told him he'd die if he ever left this tiny little spit of land, this tiny little island. And the only way he could ever leave was if four of this dragon's scales were returned to him. Uh, and 200 years have passed and nobody's returned the scales and um, we spoke to this reaver here reavers being miners basically and this guy dug really deep down and found one of the scales which had been cast into the sea so we went to this island and gave this immortal man one of the scales and he's asked us if we can find the other three um, so yeah we're doing this quest to get a little bit of perspective more on what these dragons are like how they're very different to the elder dragons of Guild Wars 2 you know these ones are talking they're interacting with humans they're not just trying to kill everything I mean we're not even sure the elder dragons are capable of speech yet uh, and yet these dragons seem to be so uh, we're looking for three more scales it's a little bit of a treasure hunt really um, and one is in the silent surf one is in the archipelago and one is in the Maishang hills so Let's just try and get him in order, shall we? Okay, so this one's at the Maishang Hills. Let's go back to the Gaiala Hatchery. And uh, let's walk back out onto the Maishang Hills where we got to this place in the first place. Uh, I had my hench henchman off camera and then we'll just go straight through the portal. If I can ever find it. There we go, there it is. It's up there. So yeah, see you in a sec. I decided to add Panaku because I feel a little bit bad. I'm always leaving him out just because he's an assassin. Siri's level 19, by the way, and I'm pretty sure he's been level 19 for a while. So the pet's almost level 20. It took us almost to the end of the game to get it to happen. Uh, and it, as you can see from our quest marker, it's actually really close, this bottle. Uh, so we look inside the bottle and uh, we'll find the message. Message in a bottle. I'm sure we've all heard of that. Let's open it up. The Ark of the Sun doth tell me that I have been upon this island for two years. As a kindness, the great salt spray dragon both grant me the power to use this bottle to forget mine most cherished memories. Why is this kindness? Because I be stranded on this island forever, and dost not wish to feel the pain of these memories. Mine father, Kappa are attacking me, go away. Okay, good. Get them, boys. My mother and father were hard-working folk. He, a tanner, she, a midwife, and herbalist. Which I was still but a child, they sacrificed their savings to buy me a berth on a merchant vessel. And were it not for them, I would never have known the joys of the sea that has been my home ever since. Goodbye, mother, and goodbye, father. Your memory will be lost to me, but I cannot live without hope of thanking you for all you have given me. This is the second bottle of four given to me. Please return to me the dragon scale on which this note was written. I am on a small island near a place called the Gaiala Hatchery. So even 200 years ago, this was uh, still a hatchery for the Luxons, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and also, you'll notice the way he's talking. This, he seems to have just sort of reverted to an old English kind of way of talking. Uh, and I think that is just um, the developer's way of getting through to us, that these people spoke differently back then. Of course, we've all seen uh, the ancient Canton is actually completely different. It's not just old English, is it? Uh, I mean, we saw Vizu speaking it um, back up at the Tanakai Temple mission. And we still see the runes of ancient Canton all over the place. So, yeah, uh, try not to get a little bit... That muddies the waters a little bit, but I think that's just one of those things that you can kind of disregard. Um, so yeah, so that was the first message. Let's go find the second one, which is out in the archipelago. So this one's a little bit more of a walk, but it's still, it's, it's not a big deal. It's not too far. Uh, there's two ways we could have come to here. We could have tried to come to here from here or from the Jade Flats. I decided to try this way. I don't know which way's faster. It's not one of those things you often find yourself doing these side quests. Uh, okay, it looks like it's really, it must be on this island somewhere. Where is the bottle? Ah, oh, there it is. There's a glass bottle. It's a glass bottle. With loads more Naga. Yay, Naga. I'll let my friends kill them. Hopefully they can. There's a boss there, so I'm a little bit worried. It should be alright. Okay, glass bottle with the dragon scale in it. Can you actually see the scale? It looks like there's something in it, but it could just be the light. Alright, messages, messages, messages everywhere. By the seasons, I reckon my time on this island has reached three years. I now send forth another message in the hope that I may shed the burden of my painful memories. Painful because I will never see those I love again. I'm going to die. Oh well. We'll keep the dialogue even if I do die. 
My dearest daughter, Bridget, was a blessing upon the house of Colreg. Her laughter and wonder at every new adventure gave this marina another reason to long for mine home port. Bridget, I bid farewell to thine memory with the, this message. Oh dear, I am dead. <laughs> for the thought that I shall never see thee grow on t into the bright, intelligent woman that I know thou shall be is unbearable. Goodbye, my dearest daughter. This is the third bottle of four given to me. Please, return to me the dragon scale on which this note was written. I am on a small island near a place called Gaiala Hatchery. So, there we go. These are really hard to read, especially when you've just got up. I, it's literally, I just got up and really wanted to do a video, so... Oh, that's why I died. These guys weren't even fighting. Fat help you guys are. Alright, okay, so that's three or four. And the final one we can find in the Silent Surf. Which is quickest to get to uh, from the next outpost that we'll be getting to. So since we're not there, we have to go to the Seafarer's Rest. And uh, we've already seen me walking through here. So uh, I will, pr unless maybe if this video ends up quite short, um, I'll leave it all in. But if not, I'm going to cut all of this out. Oh, and while we're out here, actually. Fortunes! Oh, I'm always forgetting the fortunes. Did it bet? There we go, we got our attribute bonus. Soon enough it will make us go the same. Soon enough. And then I'll have lots to read out. Alright, I can see the last bottle. There's a few dragons around here though, so I want to be careful. Last bottle was up on this island. This most southerly island I think you can get to in the Jade Sea. Oh no, they found us. Alright, I'm just going to make a run for it. I'll probably die, but um, if I, as long as I can just click it, I'll, it'll be alright. So yeah, there we go. The moon's phases tell me that I have reached my fourth year on this island, and now I must unburden myself from all, from the most cherished memory of all. Mine wife, Sophia, is the most beautiful creature in this world, a kind, patient woman whom I doth love with all my heart. Wherever she doth be, that is my home. Yet my home is now this patch of earth in the middle of the wide, unending sea. Sophia, Forgive me, for I cannot bear to live with the memory of thee, and the knowledge that thou lot be lost to me. Farewell, my dearest love. This is the last of four bottles given to me. Please return to me the dragon scale on which this note was written. I am on a small island, near a place called the Gaiala Hatchery. So again, another oh, quite a tragic story again. Oh wow, I give my uh, my team less credit than they deserve. They seem to be surviving a lot more than, I, than I'm expecting them to. So yeah, this is the uh, most southerly island you can really get to in the Jade Sea. Fucking Oni everywhere. Thanks, Oni. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, because if you actually look at the Jade Sea here, it looks like it's all just flat jade with no islands on it at all. Uh, which probably would have been the most interesting area to go to, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, but yeah, and you can even see, if you look at uh, the map there, there's a bridge you can see. Just tantalisingly on the, on the map there, just seeming to go off. Could be another example of one of those areas where they were going to add another explorable but didn't get around to it. In fact, can we even go there and see that bridge? No, we can't. But yeah, so uh, that was that quest. Let's go return to our immortal friend. Um, it's a long walk and we've seen the walk up to the island so I definitely will cut it here. Uh, I'll see you when we're up at him. Okay, so here we are back at the island. Just trying to keep away from those Naga and Claws over there. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Samty Colreg. 
200 and 210 yes 210 years I've been here it's clear to me now I remember everything from before but also everything in the time between and now that I'm free to go I find I no longer really want to leave so much has changed so many dead but thank you friend to have my life back at long last I owe you a great debt I think I think I will stay Alone, alone, all alone, alone on a wide jade sea. So, freaking every single one of these these Lux and Tales, and in the, some of them in the Kurzik place, are, are all tragic stories. So, yeah, he's basically an institutional man now. Now he just wants to live here. It strikes me funny that he doesn't even have any settlements. He just kind of <laughs> lives out on the grass. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's that quest done, um, and now I just want to take one little detour, just like we did in the Kurzik lands when we went to that uh, challenge mission. I'm about to do the exact same thing here, go into an extra challenge mission. Now the one we're going to here is probably one of those, it's one of those outposts that people rarely know e even exists. It's one of those ones where just so few people actually decide to come out here and raise crater when it's so easy to just get the primary quest and head straight south to the unwaking waters. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, may as well just run straight through. All right, so Rhea's crater. Uh, I'm ju I was just made aware that um, my microphone was probably a little bit too close to my mouth there, and it's kind of made the the uh, commentary sound a bit weird. So my apologies for that, everyone. Yay, more afflicted. So yeah, what what to say about Rhea's crater? Basically, it's just a big kind of mining area. The whole area has been really, really, really thoroughly excavated by lots of reavers over the years. Uh, and you can come to some abandoned mines. There's even a huge area with loads of water in it. Um, and yeah, so the northern sections, are, I, I believe the northern sections are still supposed to be like mines in use, while the southern ones have already been dug out. And you can see like loads of aquatic life and fish and stuff around there. Speak to this guy. Have you heard what they say about mirrors made from moonshell? Anyone who looks daily into such a mirror will live a long, fulfilling life. One would make a perfect gift for my betrothed, but I've been unable to find any shells. Alright, that wasn't so interesting. So yeah, we're going to be going uh, probably mostly along the southern section. This little staircase here is the, the one part that I hate about this little um, explorable area, by the way, because if you look there's afflicted on every floor and if you were to run down onto this staircase to try and kill these guys you're gonna uh, aggro those guys and you can see there's a focus of Hanaku there so Zoo Hanuku's spawns are still sort of running rampant so you gotta be really careful here not to suddenly have like five or six different groups all charging you at the same time you see it's full of afflicted so all those worries that the Luxons would become um, overrun by the affliction and the same with the Kurziks they were valid. It managed to make its way all the way over here. Oh yeah, and fortunes as well. Fortunes, fortunes, fortunes. Don't let me forget. It's your fault if I forget, guys. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see that the screen's gone completely messed up. Oh, shit. <laughs> I shouldn't have done this in the middle of a fight. Alright, so this is because we've basically gone insane. You can see I'm start talking to myself now. Do you like my fish balloon? Can you hear it singing to you? Uh, and that's supposed to be that you're going to have... Um, you will find bad luck in this new year, or bad luck will find you. Uh, we didn't get the stat boost either, come on. So you can see my team's getting absolutely pwned at the moment. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! There we go, that took a long time that time. So yeah, I'm going to be, that. this house has many hearts. So yeah, I'm going to be talking about a lot of stuff, and one random line, I said, my cat's name is Mittens. You'll see some of these are quite, oh look, exactly what I said happened did happen. There's loads of afflicted everywhere, we're going to wipe probably. Yes, a lot of these quotes are from Ralph in uh, The Simpsons. Like one of the things you start saying is, "My cat's breath smells like cat's my my cat's breath smells like cat food," uh, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Oh, we might not wipe actually. Mummy, where are you? I can't find you. I can't. I'm afraid of the light, mummy. I'm afraid of the light. So you go all paranoid and insane and crazy. And yeah, one of these lines has got special relevance to the next campaign, so I think it's quite cool we're going to see that line now as well, to be honest, because uh, we'll, we'll soon be on Nightfall. Soon you will all be crushed. Well, that's true. I agree with that. That doesn't sound too insane to me. As a boy, I spent much time in these lands. 
Uh, anyone who's watched the previous series might recognise that quote from a certain famous someone. Crossover children, all are welcome, all are welcome. Go into the light. There is peace and serenity in the light. So again, we've got another staircase here with even more afflicted. There's a reason there's a festival ticket in my ear. I'm trying to lure the evil spirits out of my head. I see dead people, obviously a sixth sense re reference. All is well, I am not insane. So yeah, this bit is just horrible. You can see I'm really struggling. It's just a simple little staircase, but they trick you. There's so many enemies around here. You can see even more down here that I've aggroed as well. So, so annoying. I have no idea what they were thinking when they did that. It seems that uh, after you do the Gala Hatchery in the Eternal Grove, um, the developers were just like, fuck it, these are the last explorable areas in the game. We're going to absolutely fill them up with enemies. We're going to make sure that these players cannot move a step without having tons of things on their asses. And there we go, we wiped. So annoying, so annoying. We must prepare for the coming of Banjo, the clown god of puppets. Wow. Go, banana! Abaddon will feast on your eyes, and that was the reference to Nightfall. Little teaser for anyone who's not played it. Abaddon will feast on your eyes. When I grow up, I want to be a, the principal of a caterpillar. Oh no, sorry, I want to be a principal or a caterpillar. It's this damn effect, it's crazy. The house is clean. And then the healer told me that both my eyes were lazy. And that's why it was the best summer ever. Okay, I'm going to stop um, reading this out now. I could do it for ages. Gracious me, was I raving? Please forgive me, I'm mad. Yeah, okay. Take me now, sub-creature. I've got to stop! I've got to stop. Okay, I'm not reading it anymore. I'll go into first person if I have to. Abaddon will feast on your eyes. What could he possibly mean? Is that so insane? Okay, so we're very close now. Uh, just this one last group to get through. Uh, with a boss called Cultist Miller Thuran. And an uh, interesting little thing about me. This was the first place I ever, ever, ever in this entire game farmed. I used to run out of the outpost here, kill Miller Thuran. And then just keep doing it until he dropped his green staff. Which I'd then sell for about 20k. Yeah, and that's the first way I ever got... That's how I paid for my first ever set of elite armour. Anyway, here are the Oreos Mines. Um, uh, these mines I think are supposed to be like the second biggest mine. The biggest one's the Jade Quarry. Uh, and then I think this one's supposed to be like the second largest one. Let's read the description in the outpost. Relics of a mysterious race, possibly an offshoot of the Deldramore Dwarves, have been uncovered in this productive jade mine. Though not as large or strategically vital as the enormous jade quarry, the Oreos mines are of great importance to historians and scholars. Okay, so it doesn't say it's the second most important, but it's one of the important ones. But more interestingly, look, uh, an offshoot of the Deldramore Dwarves. Now, if you guys are watching this and you've played the games uh, and you know what happened to the Dwarves in Eye of the North, then that could be particularly interesting to you. Obviously this offshoot is extinct, but perhaps they're not. Uh, we, we don't really know. But uh, once again we've got um, information telling us that not that another race has somehow made their way here, probably from tunnelling, all the way from um, the northern continents. Of course, the dwarves we know were on, the, on this world long before the humans, so I suppose it's more than possible that a long time ago, before the humans even got here, the dwarves were around, we know that they were around, if you've seen the previous series, the Massart were around, the Seers were around, we know they were all around and that they all had civilizations. So maybe way back then the dwarves were here, maybe they were here in the Jade Sea. What they were doing here, we don't know. But of course now another northern race, the Dredge, are here, and they're obviously out here in the forest. So yeah, uh, this mission is just like the other challenge mission that we found. Um, out in the Kurzik Forest. The the one in the Kurzik Forest dealt with um, Ergos, the spirit of the forest, uh, the, um, the spirit of the forest, and the wardens and so on.
Uh, and that's all to do with the elite mission you can do over in the Echo Vowed Forest. And this one, similarly, is just is deals with um, the story to do with the elite mission you can do over here in Cavalon. Uh, so let's speak to the guys. There is a guy. I'm sure there's a guy. Where are you, guy? Okay, here's here he is. Uh, this guy's called Laris. He says, Captain Rion and the rest of the Halcyon crew were out reaving for Jade when these nightmare creatures ambushed them. Without help, they'll slaughter the entire crew, but to retreat would bring dishonor on the ship, and that's not an option for the captain. If you can help the captain defend the mines while our reavers extract the Jade, you'd have our gratitude. What exactly must I do? There are several mining nodes infested by these n nightmare creatures. Exterminate them so that our reavers can continue harvesting jade. The more nodes we harvest, the more jade we can collect. The creatures are gaining in strength, so it's only a matter of time before they overwhelm us. And these creatures that he's talking about here um, are all to do with the Oni and the Outcast. As you know, uh, reavers, when they dig too deep, they can be corrupted by some some demon under the jade. They become corrupted and go insane. And that's when they become outcasts. And if they continue along that that path, they will eventually become the Oni. Um, and there's some other demons uh, similar to the Oni, but more powerful, that are attacking the reavers here at this mine. Uh, the elite mission to do with here, which we will do, just like that with the Echo Vowed Forest one in the side series, um, that one takes us deep underneath the jade to find out what this demon is and hopefully to destroy it and thereby ending the threat of the Oni all over Cantha. Uh, so yeah, that was this challenge mission outpost. Not going to do the, the challenge because I am ready to go to the Unwaking Waters. Let's return to the Leviathan Pits. Leviathan Pits. And uh, this time I believe it's Petrus. You remember Petrus? This was the guy who was with us in the Gaiada Hatchery mission with eye tattoos over his nipples. Lovely. This is an unprecedented action. Luxons and Kurziks fighting side by side, allied with the entire empire against an evil so great it has erased all boundaries between us. You must travel to the depths of the unwaking waters, and at the heart of this great whirlpool, find the Harvest Temple, Quan Jun, which has been imprisoned in Jade these 200 years. There you will obtain the power that will help us send Shiro back to the underworld. Let's do this. Okay, so we go out, we'll meet Togo. Um, where is the way out? Oh, I get so lost without a compass. So lost. Okay, it's up here. And here we go, just like Menlo was waiting for us, Togo should be waiting for us. Yes, he is. We must hurry. Menlo is likely waiting, awaiting us at the Great Whirlpool already. I'd say so, since we spent so long here doing extra quests. All right, so let's let's do it. Um, we've already seen all of this out uh, explorable area basically. I'll cut it till I don't know. We're about here maybe, um, and then we'll continue. You can see it was really close to where that last bottle was. Really close. Uh, so yeah, see you in a sec. While we're here, I feel like I should probably mention it. Um, across this bridge, we might be able to see him actually. All right, now let's let's quickly run across the bridge. On this little island here, you can find a bunch of afflicted, and this is where the assassins construct is that I've been talking about. You can see his name there. There he is. You can see him right at the back of the group, just waiting for us. Uh, thankfully, we don't have to fight him, unlike uh, the ritualist construct who was right in our way. We can actually ignore him and just go down this beach here. So there you go. That was the uh, assassins construct. So now we've seen both of them. Okay, let's start filming from here. The main reason why I wanted to pick here is because I love the colour here. It's actually like jade, yes. Love the colour of the sea here. We've got quite a, a thick wall of dragons and Kirin and crap to go through now. Uh, so this will probably be quite a lot of fighting you're seeing. Okay, so here we are. And I managed to dodge quite a few things. There's one last collector. Let's speak to her. Why not? The Kirin are magically powerful creatures. Powder and ground from their 
powder ground from their horns can fortify the shells of our creatures, making them durable and resistant. I'd like you to bring me five of their horns. So the Kirin, um, we didn't really talk about them too much, did we? Uh, but that's what Zunra was, if you remember, a Kirin. And there's quite a few Kirin that have been corrupted by the Jadwin. <laughs> Most of the enemies here, the reason why they're fighting you is... Oh, they've been corrupted. They have been corrupted by the Jadwin. So here we go, Master Togo. The Unwaking Waters! I imagine what a sight this was in the moments before it was frozen in the Jade. The violent churning. Such power. It must have been outstanding. Quan Jun Temple is locked deep within the Jade Whirlpool. I do not know what awaits us between here and there, but I, I fear our journey will not be easy. Shiro's influence is strong in this place. I expect we will face tremendous resistance in our attempt to reach the temple. Master Togo, it's been far too long since you have been this deep in Luxon territory. Welcome. Okay, Atis. The Luxon champions await you in at the Whirlpool. Be wary, there is great evil in this place. Okay, so we can play with the, with the champions in this next mission. It's a rare day when the Luxons and the Kurziks can set aside their differences for the common good. Truly, it is a feat only Master Togo and Menlo are capable of. It is just like old times, those two are unstoppable. Well, let me know when you're ready and I shall take you through. There we go, and I skipped this first bit of th this cutscene last time because I didn't want to show it twice. But this time we can see it. So here's the opening cinematic. So this is the Harvest Temple all those years ago. And the Emperor rising to go. So this is the uh, the time of the Harvest Festival. This is the day Shiro did it. This is the day he killed the Emperor. Has the temple been secured? Yes, my Emperor. There is no one inside. Your safety is assured. You will allow my retinue and my bodyguard to pass. They are coming with me. But... but no one except you is allowed inside the temple. Those were your own orders. There's been a change of plans. You will let them through. As you wish. This is a pretty tall building, really. Beware the harvest ceremony. And this bit's done a bit poorly in the cutscene, I think. I think this could have been really, really good. But uh, you Beware get the idea here. The ceremony. Everything he's been told just keeps whirling through his head. Oh, he is going to kill you. There's been a change of plan. Gives you an idea of why he ends up doing it. No one except you is allowed There's inside been the a temple. Change of plans. But, but no one except There's you is allowed inside plans. the temple. The emperor. Oh, he is going to kill you. And it just starts driving him mad. The fortune teller really gets into his head, and. So they're kneeling to Duena here. This whole festival is is a festival to Duena. The harvest ceremony. You must make the choice. Him or you.
So, that's it. That's the Unwaking Waters mission now. And uh, you might be wondering, um, why exactly when Shiro killed the Emperor, what, what happened there? And why was it that when Shiro died, a big whale came and petrified everything? It doesn't say it very clearly. I would explain where it says it at the end of the series. Uh, it doesn't say it too clearly in uh, the game. Basically, the, the Harvest Festival is a festival to Duena, and they're all praying to Duena. The idea is that uh, Duena, um, you know, the leader of the gods, uh, she blessed. She blesses the. I think she must do it every year. She blesses the emperor. And when Shiro killed the emperor, he he tried to steal that power for himself by like using this dark ritual. And then um, when and then he is slain by Archimorus and Saint Victor while he's performing the ritual, and everything kind of just goes crazy. And all of this power that Duena had ble blessed upon the emperor just kind of gets released in a really really bad way, and causes this huge. Well, yeah, you can see the whirlpool much better here. Uh, creates this huge whirlpool and just destroys everything. So this is the epicenter, everyone. This is where it all happened 200 years ago, and this is where we've come again. So let's speak to Elder Octus and get our reward. Truly, it is the combined strength of those here with you that make this possible. Perhaps the warring between our two peoples will continue once this is all said and done, but at least for the moment we can unite behind a cause that is just. Hurry to Menlo and the Kurzix. And this mission... Uh, sorry, next episode, we can do the mission, and finally, after a long, 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 long time, um, Peter Redhill and Tom Bluewood are going to meet again. And we're on the home stretch now, guys. Really, not many episodes left, so see you then.